Hey everybody, we're going to showcase another thing with the new Big Sur and the M1 processor. This is something which is pretty cool because it allows us uh, to use some of our iPad apps. And I want to show you how to actually connect those in. So for instance, um, if we were to do a search here for a synth synthesizer in the App Store, I could click on the iPhone iPad apps. And you can see that these are instruments which were designed for mobile, but now we can actually use uh, on the new Apple Silicon computers. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, that aside, um, and I don't know the full details. I know that the manufacturers, the, the developers have to opt into this. And Arturia actually has one of their instruments available and since I bought it for the iPad, it shows up here on my computer. I can load this up. Here it is. So now this is running as a standalone app. You can't hear it right this moment um, because we haven't hooked up the routing yet. But we're going to show you how to connect this in uh, to Logic. Okay, so in order to set this up, what we're going to do is set up an external instrument on my instrument track. We are going to set up the Arturia iSIM. And this destination is one of those mysteries to me. I looked at this previously, but it's not showing up here inside the MIDI studio, which means there's some sort of a, either they're just not finished implementing it or it's a glitch, I'm not sure. But we can do this through logic. It shows up. The input I'm gonna do is one and two this is uh, the black hole uh, audio driver from Existential Audio. It gives me some internal routing, kind of like Soundflower used to do. It's free, low latency. And then what I need to do, two more things. One of them is set up my audio in here so that my output is what I'm listening to. My input is the black hole, at least for this. I could do a aggregate device if I want to. And then because the ISEM goes out through the system sound, um, I'm setting up this so that the output is the black hole driver. Um, and in this case, it looks like, let's see. So The system right now, normally we would set this up to be black hole, but um, my screen capture is has hijacked it and it's still working because it's using black hole, but it's recording it simultaneously. So now I've got the instrument going out here and I can come through and treat this just like any old instrument. And the screen capture process adds some latency, but overall, when that's not screen recording, this is super responsive. We have all of our knobs and things working here. Uh, it's a great instrument. I think if you have this computer, you could go in there. I think it's like 10 bucks for this synth, so it's super affordable. And uh, one of the best things, if you don't want to have to load this up continuously, uh, one thing we could do pretty easily would be to come through, let's see, auto sampler. And we could actually record this instrument so that we have uh, a digital version that's not having to rely on the external instrument. So I think we could take this down to about five seconds. And I think every six semitones is going to be fine. Let's sample this. And we'll call this the iSEM. Yeah, iSEM bass. And we'll start that.
So now we're going to have this version of this instrument which we could play without having to load the app or any one of you could do it and uh, take this file without having the, the M1 and run the same sound. About four minutes, we're not going to do it right now. But this allows us to create a whole virtualized version of whatever patch we create with the iSIM. And then we can use this either in uh, the sampler or the alchemy instrument and uh, it's just a great way to work. It's not as great as if you actually just owned the uh, the Mac version of Arturia iSIM um, of this because uh, the full version has different features and it can run natively inside Logic. But if you were to get this computer and already have some of your favorite iPad instruments, then this is a way to be able to integrate them in without necessarily having to repurchase or or worry about other things with it. So it's a great way to run the iPad apps in conjunction with Logic. And um, it's, it's, it does work. It seems to be stable and not to have too many issues. Okay, that's all I want to show today. Hope you're having a great new year and we'll be doing more videos.